Hello everybody, my name is Elliot Newton, I'm the Biodiversity Officer for Kingston Council and welcome to the next episode of Reading Nature. And these are sessions that are running with the Library Service to encourage you to get outside and explore our wilder and greener spaces and learn more about the incredible wildlife that also calls Kingston home. And today we're standing in Elmbridge Meadows, one of Kingston's nature reserves. And Elmbridge Meadows follows the Hogsmill River, or is on the banks of the Hogsmill River. And I'm currently standing in the Hogsmill River, as you can see, and the Hogsmill is in itself is a fantastic habitat type. It is what we call a chalk stream, and there's only about 200 chalk streams on the entirety of the planet. So we're so fortunate to have the Hogsmill in our borough, um, just because it is a rare habitat within itself, and a great privilege to have that right here. But today I'm here to talk to you about a mammal that has a very unfortunate title, and that is called the water vole. And the water vole is unfortunately the UK's fastest declining mammal. Um, and I'll, in a moment I'll come on to the various reasons why that is. But this is a lovely picture of a water vole. And as you can see, it's pretty adorable. Um, and across the UK, we've got four different species of, uh, of vole. Um, the two that you can currently find in Kingston are bank voles and field voles. Over in the Orkney Islands, they have their own uh, particular their own species of vole called the Orkney vole and if we went back to 2017 which was the last record of water voles in Kingston you could find them here but as I say unfortunately they are locally extinct in the borough at the moment. However water voles have a very important role to play in any river system. As you can see by this picture even though it's obviously inflated in scale water voles are quite a big vole they're actually a, a third or so larger than all the other voles that we have in the UK. So that means they actually provide quite um, a, a good meal for a lot of predators like herons. So they really are important in supporting the prey base, providing energy into the food chain. And if you had more, if you had a thriving population of water voles on the river, that would mean that you can have more and more species in a more complex food chain based on top of them. So that is a really important role they, they play just within, within the river. Another, another role that they play, they have really uh, diverse diets. So a water vole can eat about 227 different types of plant. And as they're nibbling away in all these different plants, they obviously poop out quite a lot. And then they poop out the seeds that they are, they're, they're, they're the plants that they might be eating. And that means they're very important seed dispersers and help improve the sort of level of, uh, of, of plants and, and the uh, abundance and diversity of plants that we'll have in the river system. Another important thing that uh, water voles do is that they, they create these really complex and fantastic burrows in the banks. And these banks obviously provide fantastic homes for water voles to live in and store food and raise their young. But they also provide habitat for other species such as grass snake. Um, so, as I, so I hope those three reasons are just some of the reasons why it's so important that we have water voles in our river systems. But as I said, unfortunately they're no longer here. And there's a number of reasons for that. One reason why we've lost water voles, not just in Kingston, but why they are the UK's fastest declining mammal, is that a lot of our river habitats have declined in their sort of suitability. Um, they, don't, they may not be able to support, they might not have the levels of, of, of food and plants that they can, the water voles need to, 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 to eat and survive and thrive on a river. And part of the reason of that is that trees will shade the river and overshade all that marginal aquatic vegetation and that, that can be part of the reason for sort of the decline in habitat suitability for water voles. But probably the most profound reason why water voles have suffered such uh, a horrible demise in recent years has been the arrival of American mink. And American mink were brought over in about the sort of the 70s and 80s to fuel the fur trade and there were these big fur farms set up to, 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 to farm mink. Um, and animal welfare activists as, uh, obviously did, didn't take kindly to such practices because it did involve animal welfare implications and also uh, and, and, and therefore released, um, <coughs> broke in and released a lot of mink into the landscape and mink are actually a very mobile species they can, they can travel kilometres and kilometres just in one day so some naturally escaped so that, that means we started to have American mink enter our river systems and that was a really big problem because even ground nesting birds and water voles had never experienced mink before so they had no evolutionary adaptation to be able to sort of defend themselves against predation from them. And 
so therefore they were heavily predated upon because they didn't know what to do when they when a mink appeared. They didn't know how to escape and defend themselves. Um, so, but uh, luckily in, in, in the Hogsmill catchment, we're, we're, we're monitoring the mink problem, and we don't think there are any mink currently in the river, which is a really positive sign. So, therefore, we think it might be possible to bring water voles back to our river. And uh, a fantastic local, locally community led initiative run by Citizen Zoo uh, is currently working to train and get lots of local people involved in helping us bring back the water vole, which is a really positive news story. And so far today we have over 100, over 100 volunteers involved with the project and the volunteers have mapped all the habitat across the Hogsmill and we've found that there is really good habitat for water voles already here. We've also raised, there's also raised the money to sort of purchase the water voles so, there's been, so we are all in it, getting close to being in a position to try and bring them back. And that will be a fantastic reason, that will be a fantastic thing to celebrate, not just because the ecological benefit that they bring to that river also because they are a fantastic thing to see and hear when we go on daily walks along the river. And you can see seeing them, you can see by that I mean they are a beautiful thing when you get a chance to glimpse them, but you might think, oh it's a surprising thing when I said to hear them because they actually don't make a very loud noise. But what they, when they do make a loud noise is when they're scared and when they're worried that they might be attacked by a predator. So when water voles are sitting on the bank side, nibbling on vegetation, they're always looking out. Uh, just, just, just in case they might for potential predators. And if they see something that might uh, think that they, that they might perceive as a threat or a danger and be a risk to their own uh, risk, a risk to their own being, what they'll do, they'll launch themselves into the river and make a really loud plop sound in a similar way. But that plop sound is not just the water vole trying to escape. It's also you warning the other water voles that live in an in, in earshot of this water vole and it acts as an alarm call. So once you hear that one plop you might hear a whole series of plops, which is just a really nice thing to listen out for. So hopefully, in not too far distant future, you'll be able to come along for a walk along the river and you might hear the fantastic plop of the water once again.